Next, I want to show an easy way to add unique textures to your simple synth patches. And this is going to be through adding different types of noise to your sound. We're going to use one of the noise generators to add some texture, and then also show how distortion can also be used to add a little bit of texture on top of your sounds as well. We'll be using a few different styles of distortion inside the filtering, and also inside of the effects units inside of the synth. So it'll give you kind of a wide variety of different sounds that you can play with. So before we have a simple kind of house pluck that sounds like this. And then after with the noise, it's gonna be a lot more textured. It's gonna sit more on top of that drum part. So it does a good job of filling up some of the different frequencies inside of this mix, and it makes it sound a lot more full, and all we're doing is really just layering in a touch of noise. If you're curious what these notes are doing, again, these will be available in the course materials, but here is just those chords. We're in the key of D minor, in case you're curious. Just some simple uh, seventh uh, chords going on here. And let's go ahead and copy that over. Label that main so we can stay nice and organized. And then we can go ahead and get started on that patch, adding in that noise. Let's go ahead and open up our vital synthesizer patch. And I'll give you a quick tour and then we'll jump into the sound design. So right now we have this vital sign number two. It's set down in octave, regular level control, a little bit of unison and time skew to kind of play around with this just a little bit. We have that layered with another oscillator, kind of a variation of a saw wave that's a bit more rounded, a little bit more like a sine wave. This is just add in additional harmonics. And we've used that same low pass technique to make it a bit more lo-fi. Both of these are set to filter one, even though there's no filter happening here. So I'll just kind of route it to the same section. We have some amplifier envelope to make this more of a pluck. And then so far we have a couple of different effects, some chorus, equalization, and some delay to kind of fill it out. And again, it just sounds like this. That has a nice texture to it, but it definitely needs to kind of sit on top of that drum beat. So if we listen to where this kind of sits right now, it really sounds like it's kind of sitting behind the drums and not out in front of them. And if this was like a progressive house track or something like that, then it would really need to sit on top of those drums and act kind of as the main element for the whole production. Let's we'll start playing around with noise and see what this can do to add some texture to my whole production. So there's a bunch of different options here. If we turn on the sampler section of this device, go ahead and turn that down too so that way it's not too loud. Right now we get that white noise layered on top of my synth. But we have quite a bit of different options to go through and actually vary this noise. So I can click on this, and then we have all of these different options. We have things like an HVAC unit, which is going to be more of like a hum. Kind of has like a weird metallic thing. We have a jackhammer. So we have a couple of different options depending on what we want to go for. For us, I'm going to go ahead and choose the waves texture. So I'm going to turn that on, go over here, turn out the level, just so you can hear exactly what this is doing by itself. So it adds in kind of this nice crashing wave sound. And because of this ambience, it kind of has a more organic feel to it, which would be perfect to layer in with our synth patch. So the first thing that we're going to do is go ahead and send this to its own filter. So I'm going to send this to filter two. And I'm going to go ahead and turn that on. We'll put that all the way up for now, but we're going to play around with that here in a second. So that way we can actually adjust how the sound is sitting on top of these different elements inside of my synth. The other thing I want to do is make sure that this is loops so that way it loops my noise once it finishes. In case I'm playing longer notes, let's make that keyboard track so that way it actually maps that pitch across the keys. So whenever I play different notes or chords, it actually repitches that noise. Because it sounds kind of weird and flangy if I don't have it pitch mapped with it. So that's a way to get the noise sounding a lot more natural and a lot more kind of integrated into the main synth patch. So make sure to turn on that pitch tracking. The other thing that I want to do is kind of repitch this noise until it sounds nice with my waves. So I like it about negative eight semitones. Kind of helps it blend a little bit better. Whereas before, kind of wasn't the right pitch, but because we're playing around now with the pitch of our noise and mapping that across the keyboard, we can adjust that until it fits well with the other elements inside the track. From there, let's go ahead and filter out the top end, reduce a little bit of that resonance. Let's also crank that drive so that way it's even more textured, so we're adding 
noise and texture through that distortion. And obviously we don't want that much, so we're gonna turn this down. And the next thing that we'll do is add in just a little bit of auto panning. And I wanna go ahead and click on this and then hit make bipolar so that way it pans left and right. Now you can see it's panning left and right here. We're gonna have that be just randomly synced to the project BPM. So that way now it's panning back and forth, kind of provides a little bit more space for that noise so it could sit on top of everything. Maybe even add a little bit of this envelope here to this filter, just a little bit of that. So that way it just kind of dances on top of that sound a little bit better. So what we're doing here is modifying our waveform, so this noise, to fit better with these oscillators through the use of filtering and adding some texture through that distortion. And a context of that track with the drum beat. And then without it. So it doesn't sound like much when it's on its own, but whenever it's in context to that whole production, it really makes that whole part a lot more interesting. The next time you're looking to kind of enhance a synthesizer patch and to give it a little bit more of like an organic texture, start playing around with different ways of layering and noise and filtering that noise to blend it in with your waveforms. It could be a really interesting way of adding this more almost acoustic quality to your waves and giving them something that's nice and unique to help them better sit inside your productions. So thanks for checking out this tip. I'll see you in the next video.